Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to go out to the World Islands. Pretty excited about that. I've been out there once before. So this is going to be my second trip to the World Islands. So basically the World Islands are roughly 300 man-made islands off the coast of uh, Dubai. And uh, we're going to look at the current situation out there and also discuss the complications in respect to energy and power solutions. But before we get going, I need a coffee. Um, and before we leave, let's just have a look at the World Islands on Google Maps uh, so that you get a perspective of where they are and how big they are. Now, let's have a look at the location of the World Islands. This is a map of Dubai. Here you see Palm Jumeirah and here you see the World Islands. To be able to get to the World Islands, we will take a boat from Jumeirah Beach. Closest island of the World Islands to the mainland is 4 kilometers, and the furthest is 10 kilometers. When we take a closer look at the islands, we see very few developments. The construction of the 300 island began in 2003. Until 2012, only one of the islands was occupied, and that was the show home. Today we will go to Lebanon Island, which is used commercially for events, parties and as a beach club. We're now here on uh, Lebanon Island, uh, approximately six kilometers off the, uh, off the coast of Dubai. Um, this is the only island that has been commercially used, I believe since 2012 or 2014. Um, all the other ones, well, the only one that is as well under construction over there, that's the heart of Europe, which Currently is supposed to open in 2020 and then there is another development uh, from Seven Tides which is basically in South America which was supposed to be developed but I haven't heard anything from that development for a while so it might be on hold um, yeah World Islands was supposed to have a very sustainable touch right um, they are very conscious of sustainability, where the water goes, uh, how the electricity in theory is being produced. At least that was the concept originally. They, they developed or built artificial reefs, if I recall that correctly. So with that in mind, I think it's interesting to look at the power supply, what is currently being produced and what is planned for these developments like the heart of Europe. Okay, now we are going to have a look at how this island is getting its uh, power. I can already sort of hear the generators running. So it's obvious it's diesel generators, but uh, yes. let's have a closer okay. look. Ah, here you see the generators over there. I think because basically we are the only customers right now, they've uh, reduced the electricity demand to the bare minimum. So they have only a small generator running, but you see that they have multiple larger generators here when they have more gas. So this is the Europe, the heart of Europe. Uh, in 2014, it was announced that they would start the construction. And recently um, they announced also that they would actually plan to open some of this, this uh, by the end of 2020. I think this is still very optimistic, but irrespective of COVID, they, they plan to still open uh, the heart of Europe, at least partially. It's a massive undertaking. I mean, and by far the largest development currently uh, happening here on the World Islands. And if you think about it, I mean, on this island, we have barely any in infrastructure. There's, they, they switched off the air conditioning, the, the pool is not uh, uh, cooled down. 
there's nothing really that needs electricity currently here and still you constantly hear the noise of the diesel generator so if they would start actually uh, cooling down the restaurant cooling down the pool they would need to switch on all the other generators on the other hand if you think over there at the heart of Europe they actually want to create snow they want to create rain they will have air conditioning the pools need to be cooled down they are going to need massive amounts of electricity so running that development on diesel generators is going to be difficult or at least expensive and um, probably not that sustainable so what is the current situation here uh, from an energy point of view the heart of Europe and the Seven Tides developments are, to my knowledge, the only two developments that are currently under construction. Actually, with the Seven Tides development, I'm not even sure whether that is currently ongoing. So let's assume in uh, 2021, the heart of Europe is going to get completed. And let's assume in the near future, also the Seven Tides development is going to get completed. Combined, these two developments make up significantly less than 10% of the world islands. I would argue that it's maybe in the range of 5%. So that's important for the future consideration. All of these developments are also extremely energy intensive, right? So the heart of Europe, for example, wants to produce artificial snow. It wants to create uh, rain. Um, all the air conditioning uh, requires a lot of energy. The pools need to be chilled. Also during the construction, all of these uh, sites require diesel generators. So currently that's no alternative to this. So this is the current situation. It's very energy intensive to run these operations. Plus currently estimate is only that 5% of the islands are being utilized. So what does that mean basically from an energy solution as a complication? So originally DIWA, Dubai Authority to provide water and electricity, intended to connect the world islands to the electricity grid from the mainland. So they wanted to build an undersea cable. So what should they do now? Should they plan in building an undersea cable for these two developments? And then if a third development uh, is being developed or completed, the, the system is undersized? Or should they immediately aim to build an undersea cable and the whole infrastructure as if the whole world islands is completed with all the 300 islands being completed? This is obviously has huge implication in them designing the solution and sizing the system. So now we're getting closer to the heart of Europe. Uh, I don't know whether you can see over there the seahorses. Over there is the Sweden, Swedish villas or whatever they are called. Um, over there is something, um, the high rises is, is something Italian. I need to check that up. Uh, and I think I can only hear one machine operating right now. There's one construction machine I can see and hear. So there doesn't seem to be a lot going on, but let's try to get a little bit closer. So now we are on an island close to the heart of Europe. One island where there's still construction happening, it seems to be some villas here very close by. And in the far distance, you can also see the concrete batching plant, sort of the, these towers that you're seeing there. But so I guess the conclusion is there's still work going on, it's not a lot, um, so it should be definitely busier if they want to open this by the end of this year. Uh, some of these places like Portofino, you can see through the place, uh, so half of it seems to be uh, actually quite progressed. It seems to be already having windows in there, uh, so that's a good sign. And the other place is uh, yeah, still just a shell. All in all, I mean, this is obviously not a super sustainable building. From that point of view, I'm not sure how excited I'm about this development. But now that it's done, uh, it is an amazing development from an engineering point of view. Um, and now also that uh, soon, hopefully, uh, guests will be able to come here. Uh, the developer should make sure that the energy produced is as sustainable as possible. And obviously that's... Uh, the objective of this video to start analyzing that and come up with solutions uh, that are cost-effective and sustainable. 
We'll have a look afterwards whether we can even get closer with the boats, but I think this is probably as close as we can get. So it's not clear to me where all these diesel generators are going to be placed um, once these developments start operating. I know that in Dubai, uh, pretty much every building needs to have, or at least residential and commercial buildings, larger buildings need to have standby or emergency generators. So I suspect that they are just planning for these in larger spaces or underground spaces in these developments and that's where they will be placed but it's definitely not uh, in my view the perfect solution in the current environment these are the seahorses they are quite uh, smart engineering so they are independent of the land i think they have underground bedroom and then living room and then upper deck uh, for entertainment so this is quite neat i suspect that they still want to be relatively close to the island to have the utility for running them. They're quite neat. And obviously it was also smart of the developer because uh, it adds real estate. So we are now back at the mainland um, because of the length of the video and because of the complexity of the topic we are going to discuss um, the solutions, the energy solutions in the coming videos of Energy Lab. So watch out for the videos in the next one or two weeks. Um, make sure you subscribe and like the video.